Hello, my name is Anticular Pony, and I'm the mod of Fast Sunshine and Moonbeams on Tumblr, and you are listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 129. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hello, Norman, and hey, everybody. How is it going? I'm doing fine. What about you, man? Uh, not so well, actually. Got oh bad my. news that one of my buddies is not being able to come to Spain because the airplane flight just did a buy some apples on him. So, uh, yeah, he's not a, he's not gonna be able to come to visit me. Oh, that, that sucks. It sucks. <sighs> also, my yeah. health is just kicking my ass right now. But eh, I cannot do much about that. They have a doctor's appointment next week. Oh, okay, that's good. That's good. And also joining us today is Rom. Hello, all you happy people of the internet and beyond. Hey, Rom. How are you doing, man? Slowly but surely. Ah. Awesome. Thanks. That's good. That's good. That's good. And our guest for this week is Antica Pony. Hello there. Hey there, Antti. <laughs> Go my outside. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Mr. Horse Famous. Yay. I'm not Horse Famous. Go away. <laughs> no, no. It's I, I time still to... don't even know why I'm here. Now it's my time. Now it's my time to piss off other people and calling them horse famous after people call it <laughs> all the time. Now it's my time to be the. That's not a word. <laughs> but James Senpai, Senpai James, is so horse famous. Oh. But I am not. I am not your senpai. Now you are. You are my senpai because you have more followers on on uh, Ask Sunset and Rainbow and Moonbeams than I have in Movies Late. Uh-huh. What really? No, seriously, I have like 27, no, no not even 2700, and you are over 3000. Yeah, you have more followers than I do on Movies Late. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> oh, God. Now give me your followers. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, Andy, um, you've been yes. here before, right? Uh, yes, I have. So, but I'm uh... not going to bore the audience with the last two questions. So, I'm going to go for straight two uh, favorite character, favorite episode. Okay, uh, favorite character would be Rainbow Dash because uh-huh. she's awesome. Good pick. Yes. Good pick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and favorite episode would be Party of One. Close <laughs> by second would be uh, Pinky Pride. Ah, can't blame <laughs> yes. you. Those two episodes are pretty awesome. None of them yeah. entirely focused on Dashi. Well, Pinky Pride yeah, maybe weird, a lot. But... Ma- Pinky, well, Pinky Pride maybe partially, but Party of One is an exclusive uh, Pinkie Pie episode. Well, technically, it did start the fandom with something bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love no, how no. She, she went completely insane. Yeah. She went completely insane, but the fanfic predates the episode, actually. Really, now? Yes, really? the fanfic predates the episode by a couple of months. Because hmm. so, yeah, yeah. For those guys, for those of you guys who don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about cupcakes. Uh, and don't that, read your god. Don't that fanfic that. that fanfic appeared after uh, Griffin the Brush Off as a oh. response to all the annoying Pinkie Pie Rainbow Dash shipping fix that were populating Fortune oh. at the time. So Sergeant Sprinkles was so angry at it that he decided to write an anti shipping fanfic and that's how ha- that's how ha- cupcakes came into existence and then the fan the, the, the <laughs> official release goes and makes it canon. Oh, oh god! god. <laughs> it's kind of terrifying how close that episode got to cupcakes, all the way down to. It was it, it was hilarious. If you were in the streams when people were watching Party of One, I was in one of them, and the guys when Rainbow Dash steps in, all the guys went, "No, Dash, go back, go back, don't go, don't go in, cupcakes no." Uh, yeah. Don't <laughs> make it canon. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, absolutely hilarious. Mm, well, have to be the kind of thing, I guess. But anyways, yes. thank you, Andy, for the answer. And well, okay. let's move on to the next topic. And okay. since I'm going to turn things around, I'm going to start with guest time first. And oh, Andy, it's your time. So I'm being put on the spot here. Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah, mind telling us who you are and what you do to the people who might not know who you are. All right, uh, I am uh, known as Anticular Pony. I draw ponies, <laughs> I guess. No way! Uh, I wonder why you had the, I, the word pony in your I, name. I Probably. <laughs> I am also Malaysian, just like Norman. Hello. Ah, cool. Yes, I started off doing like lots of paintings, but now I am the mod of uh, Tumblr blog called uh, Ask Sunshine and Moonbeams. 
Hmm. Yes. That, that's one interesting blog. So, first question goes, how did it start? How did it start? Well, uh, like one day I, I was uh, I was really bored, as usual. Mm-hmm. I decided to just uh, sketch out a picture of the two princesses. I sketched it out and I really enjoyed it because they're both sisters, right? Mm-hmm. And it's really funny to see both of them just ah. Uh, <laughs> Interacting, interacting as yeah. yeah as sisters, so I I kept drawing I kept drawing them those two together and I'm like hey, why don't I start a whole Tumblr blog based on this and boom. But didn't That's, you actually uh, didn't want to start a Tumblr blog? Like I think it was me and a few yeah. other people that forced you into it, right? Yeah, yeah, I was I was kind of reluctant to start a Tumblr at first because you know how Tumblr, uh, like. Engulfs your soul, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Dude, the same could be said. Could be said about many other websites. Oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> so I was kind of intimidated by it. All right. But yeah. So, um, how long has your blog been around? Uh, my blog has been around since. Let's let's take a look at the first post here. First post was made. Oh, a month ago, I'd say a month and a week ago. <laughs> a month and a week ago, and how many followers you have now? Hey, I have three thousand three hundred sixty-one. <laughs> the hell? <laughs> I have no that, idea. Is, that is almost a hundred followers a day. <laughs> <laughs> how? Well, that escalated quickly. This guy, I... this guy got more followers in a month than I got in two years. What the hell? <laughs> I what am I doing wrong? have no idea. Okay. What, did I, what am I doing wrong with movies like I have to reass, reassess my uh, my priorities. <laughs> so, <laughs> like James and well, uh, James and Rom here do have uh, us Tumblr blogs, and yes, James here is more a veteran, so he has a formula to it. So, what makes yours special? <laughs> I. I think I think it's because of the uh, the way I portray the, uh, the the two princesses. Like I portray them as like real sisters, like two sisters, just uh, interacting as sisters, like they should. Mm. So basically, just doing lovable sister stuff. So mm-hmm. where did the idea came from? Like getting the two of them interacting with each other, like. What inspired you to draw them as they are? Uh, well, I have a I have a little sister myself. I I am the big brother, and I have a little sister. Mm. So my interactions with my little sis sometimes you can, you can get like super funny moments. So that's what I try and put into the blog with uh, the two pony princesses. Mm, yeah. Okay. So since you're a brother and you have a sister, why not do something shining armor and cadence related? Mm, yeah, I could, no, no, Shining Armor and Twilight. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, Shining Armor and Twilight. I could probably do that. Uh, <laughs> well, um, not not. You don't but, necessarily need to do that. Uh, if you think about it, it doesn't matter the gender. What matters is the experience. So unless there is something gender specific, I think any situation could be easily applied. Mm, probably. Yeah, so, but there, yeah. there are there are some things that only siblings uh, do. <laughs> oh, true, true. Yeah. So, Andy, um, I'm I'm probably guessing here, um, just spitballing ideas here, but do you think that because it's Celestia and Luna related that your Tumblr blog got the views or got that popular because of it? Probably, I think. I, sometimes I like to think that people follow me just because there's Luna in, in it. <laughs> mm, true, Luna. Which is no, probably it is, true in most it is, cases. That's one of the reasons, man. Because if you, it doesn't matter what it is, if you put Luna into it, people are gonna like it. Uh, <laughs> because this fandom, this fandom is this fandom is that predictable. It is a fact that if you put Luna into something, people will buy it, they will watch it, they will comment on it, they will add it to their favorites. It is fact. You cannot refuse hmm. that fact. <laughs> true that, true that. Yeah. But I, I think what an added bonus to it is also that Anti's comedic timing and nature of the Tumblr block is kind of cute at the same time. I mean, if we're trying to analyze his work pattern or even the formula to how he 
became or how that Tumblr blog became popular, I would have to say that the cute nature of the comics, the drawing style, the two sisters, uh, all those make a, be- a beautiful combination. Mm-hmm. I agree. It was not. It was not my intention at all to, to become this popular at all. I just kind of like just want enjoy. It. I really, really enjoy drawing those two together. This is so fun. True, true. It's... I mean, me reading it, I do enjoy it. Like especially the one that you want to make a Tumblr blog. <laughs> it was just silly. It <laughs> yeah, was a pretty good first post. Of <laughs> true, true, true. Well, you're combining. That was the the reference to Frozen, right? Yes, yes, it was. Dude, you're making a reference to Frozen on Tumblr. How are these people not going to follow you? True <laughs> that. Once, once again, is... I never put any deep thought into any of these posts. I just sort of make it, it up as I go along. It's it's fine though. That's perfect because uh, that's that. You know what? That has kind of become the new. Uh, Let's draw the word sex on a <laughs> banner and then write in very thin, fine letter the intentions of the post underneath. It has become that new thing. Like, put ponies, frozen, uh, I don't know, supernatural is the other thing that Tumblr really likes. Uh-huh. Put it put it there in big letters and then underneath, okay, now that I got your attention, here's what I really want you to read. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's a good, me. it's a, it's a good way to uh, to advertise your stuff. No, 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 no. It's marketing 101. Bring something that people are familiar with and like, and then bring them another different product that they might also be interested in. Like, I'm pretty sure many people are coming, but a lot of people are staying as well. Mm-hmm. That means you're doing something right. True, true. Yeah. So, James, got any question for anything? Uh, poof. out of curiosity, what program do you use to work? Uh, I use Photoshop CS6. Oh, that's cool. You're another Photoshop guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was so alone. At the, I don't know if it happened to you. We both went to back, and we both were there, and uh, there was also Twiggy Lee and everyone else, and Twiggy mm. started shouting, Sci people! Paint all Sci people! And people started coming around, coming out of the good work and whatever and she had like 10 or 15 people around her all of them working with painful sigh and there I am alone and smelling bad with like cold and everything as a photoshop artist and I'm like I use photoshop James did you even jump onto the chair and scream photoshop people come with uh, me brethren you should have done that no, what no, is no. our profession <laughs> Because I'm not insane. Besides, I think that if I, if I had done that, that would have started a, a West Side Story musical number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, since I since I started off by uh, painting, mm-hmm. like digital painting, no no line art at all. Uh, I thought Photoshop would would be better for that. So wait, this... you said digital painting? Um, you didn't start off with. Photoshop to begin with, or did you? I did. Oh, yeah. So you started off with Photoshop with digital painting, then, all right? Yes, CS4. Ah, uh, long oh, time ago. Geez, man. <laughs> and then oh, I saw CS3. people. I saw I saw people working with CS4. It looked very awkward <laughs> and not fluid at all. At all. No. Was it like that? Yes, it was. I'm so oh. glad I got CS6 now. <laughs> I, 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 I am. I used to draw with. Uh, I used to draw with CS1. Oh god! Like the very, very oh, first oh, Photoshop. Really? That one is actually. That one is actually really good. CS1 is a very good uh, program. And then I moved to CS2. Uh, and the reason why I moved to CS2 was because Photoshop was uh, Adobe mm-hmm. released all of the copies they had of CS2 for of free. their the their Creative Suite for free, mm. and I downloaded Photoshop CS2. I didn't download any other. But then I moved to CS5, and I actually got a license for that one, so I'm fine. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So, Antti, um, I'm guessing you also use a tablet. Yes, I do. Uh, Using a Intuos 2, a very old model made for Windows XP. <laughs> oh I'm, my god! I'm currently looking at a new tablet. Uh, How do you even <laughs> run a Windows XP tablet on a Windows 7 machine? I'm I'm assuming you have Windows 7, right? Yes, I do. Okay, yes, good. Do. It's the better one, yes, of course. But <laughs> you have to use those legacy drivers. Oh god! Yeah, and so that uh, the the software 
compatibility and the, the, the back and forth is very iffy at times. Mm. Sometimes I just lose all my pressure sensitivity and I hate it. Oh. <laughs> so that's why I'm looking at uh, Intuos Pro at the moment. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. So James, any yeah. recommendation to give anti? Uh Yes, actually. I will recommend you to get your hands on an Intuos 5 uh, yeah. tablet. Yeah, get an Intuos 5. It's the one that I use. I've been using this little thing for over two years now. It works so well. It's so pretty. It's so precise. And it just feels so natural. It's like throwing on a piece of paper. Seriously, it's really good. Awesome. Uh, large or medium size, do you think? I will go for something medium. You don't want something too big. Uh, after all, how much money are you making every month? I am sponsored by my parents. So yeah. In that case, in that case, medium. get yourself a medium size. Medium. Unless you are, uh, yeah, unless you are going full professional and full freelance with your work, get a, a medium size. Also, be careful with wanting to get your hands on a on a Cintiq. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the idea of getting a tablet with a with a screen. monitor mm. screen on it, it's very attractive and it's very appealing. Until you realize that it's a completely different thing, it takes a very long, very lengthy learning curve. Yeah, you need to get used to it. Because now there's this hand in front of your screen now. Yeah, so be careful I, with that. I would recommend talking to people you know about it because I mm. there's a few people I know, like Pika PT and also Lionheart Cartoon. They use a Cintiq. Yeah. And for Lion, he does it professionally as a animator and... And Pika as an animator also. So, yeah, I mean, make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. And James, if I'm not mistaken, Sketchy has a, mon- a tablet with a screen on it, right? Yeah, no. No, he doesn't. Oh. Well, okay. he has his... Da- he doesn't have a Wacom tablet. By the way, we, guys, we are talking about Wacom. If you are looking for uh, tablet recommendations based on this podcast, mm-hmm. don't because you're not going to get uh, fair recommendations. Yeah. Uh, there are many other brands out there that are going to charge you for the quality and not just for the brand name. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. only reason why we are talking Wacom is I'm pretty sure Anti the same as me. We kind of like the, 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 the name of Wacom for the fact that it mm-hmm. means reliability and precision. Yes. Which is why I like using Wacom. But other tablets out there in the market, they have ex- they have uh, similar tablets for a cheaper price. Mm. So make sure that you check all the available tablets before you decide to buy on a new one. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, true yeah. And the tablet that Sketchy has, it doesn't have a screen on it. What it has, it's like uh, an envelope of plastic on it, so you can like uh, put a picture that you did on paper. Oh. Underneath it and just trace on it on the computer. Okay, that way it seemed like my um, tablet, the Wacom, very old one. I forgot the name. It's Graphite right. Five, something like that. Graphite. So, something like that. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's basically oh. the for the people who don't have a scanner here. You can scan your picture, but only if you draw very carefully on the lines. <laughs> I never saw the point of that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah uh, same. Yeah, so I mean, uh, there's pros and cons to everything. So if you're looking for a recommendation by us, we're pro Wacom. But if you want to have a more balanced recommendation, go through the internet. Look what people are using and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Antti, besides being a very popular Tumblr guy, you also do art on your DeviantArt under the name Antiquilla Pony, right? Yes. And it, your art has also been featured on EQD, right? Mm-hmm. So, here's a logical question. How come nobody really knows Antiqua, but they know Sun, uh, Sunshine and Moonbeam? Uh, that is a good question, isn't it? Uh, May I, I, I give your answer, but I am going to pontify that. Uh, I, have a, I have a good explanation for that, because I feel the same with movies late. But go ahead, go ahead. I honestly have uh, no idea, but some people... I found at Buck that some people do know Antiquity Pony and other people do know our Sunshine and Moonbeams because uh, those EQD posts really help. Oh, ah, <laughs> awesome. Uh, mm, I, I have no idea. What do you think, James? Uh, it is it is surprisingly easy uh, okay. for the creation to get out of control from the creator. Uh, if you remember the movie Kick Ass, okay, mm-hmm. there is one scene. That, that movie is a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag of a movie. Like it's not bad, but I wouldn't call it spectacular. But there is one line of dialogue 
that very much defines what it feels like creating something very popular. Like this dweeby guy, he creates this superhero called Kick-Ass, and he has a Facebook page for himself and a pa- Facebook f- page for uh, Kick-Ass, okay? So in one scene, he's like, look at that. My Facebook page, 15 followers. My uh, The Kick-Ass page, 25,000 followers. There is no difference here, man. So it's similar to that. My normal Tumblr has like 500 followers, and Movies League has o- almost 3,000. Uh, it usually happens that people forget that behind there is a creator behind the creation. So it, it happens to everybody. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but also here's one thing. Do, do you think that it could be the, your drawing style that is being compared to? Like how you draw sunshine and moonbeam is a bit different from how you draw your normal way of art. <laughs> I think it's because Sunshine and Moonbeams, right, it's specifically geared to make people laugh, smile, you know, mm-hmm. good feelings, really cute. Uh, while Antiquary Pony is just really, uh, let's say, like, elaborate uh, paintings, mm-hmm. beautiful ones, that they, they don't actually gear towards a certain kind of... Uh, emotion, I guess? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean... or, or maybe just because Luna. Oh, I probably. I mean, uh, I, I hate to compare artists, but if you look at John Jaseko and the way he do things, it's technically, you know that's John Jaseko. I mean, with, even with James, when you see Movie Slate and his normal works of art, you can tell that's Movie Slate or there's James's work. But with Anticular, I mean, your Cutie Mark Crusader is a really popular one. But when I look at Sunshine and Moonbeam, two totally different worlds. You know what? I don't. I, I don't. I don't agree with you, Norman. Really? Yeah, I don't because I can very. Well, I have anti print, the mm-hmm. movie slate print that he got me. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at that and I'm and I am I'm seeing that and I am like that is totally the guy who who draws sunshine and movements. Like True. you can tell it by the by the way that is lighted, by the way that uh, the uh, the pressure of the pen had when he was applying the inks. You can tell by the size of the eyes. You can tell by the facial expressions. Like, when... I'm pretty sure that because Sunshine and Moonbeams, it is super cute to make people happy and all that. I'm pretty sure that it's easy to tell it's anti when you compare it with similar cute and happy artwork drawn by anti. But when you compare it with, like, sad or actiony or intense work from him, I'm pretty sure you won't be able to to, to tell that it's the same artist. Hmm... Probably, yeah, yeah, like probably. similar similar subject allows uh, an easier identification of the artist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then again, yeah, I have uh, an uh, then again yeah, I have yeah. an analytical eye for everything, so I cannot help it sometimes. Right, I just cool, cool. can help it. Uh, I find that my gallery is just a complete mishmash of styles. Like <laughs> you look at my gallery, and you won't be able to tell if all of these were done by me. Mm. Because I, I like I like to play around with how I do things in Photoshop. That's good. That is so really you're saying you're trying to find your method or trying to find your own way then? Uh, not really. I it's more like I look like browsing art websites like DeviantArt, and I'm like, mm-hmm. hey, I like that style. I wonder if I can do it myself, and then I try it out. That's why you've got so many different styles in my uh, DeviantArt gallery. You want to mix it up. You don't want to get stuck in a single style, so you're trying several. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, the thing is, exactly. I have I now have a separate line art style and a separate painting style. So I, I, I'm sorry, Auntie. Yeah. Are you my are you my like uh, twin or something like that? Because <laughs> I, I do the exact same thing. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, if you look at the at the Applejack picture, looking at herself in the mirror. And then you mm-hmm. compare it with the Jotaro Koju versus Dio from uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure picture that I did. You look at those two pictures, they have completely different styles. One is warm and cozy, and the other one is just like a splash picture taken out of a Street Fighter. That's, mm-hmm. uh, that's, that's something that few artists do, and it's good to step out of your comfort zone and try new things. Yes. That is good. That is really good. Yes, to any beginner artist out there, just, yeah, Please just try and own. branch out with everything. You know, yeah, play yeah, around. yeah, branch out. All right, cool. I mean, um, I'm sorry if you feel offended by it, but there's something I noticed. 
other than that, you also do commissions, right? Yes, I, I do commissions. Haven't so, been getting a lot lately, though. <laughs> uh, so basically, I could just do this anti drama outside. Ah, no, no, no. <laughs> I have twice <laughs> already. Uh, more, uh, more, more, <laughs> more. Yeah. No, actually, three times. Three times. <laughs> Uh, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you for all three of them. And I'll be asking you for more with a commission at it. Yeah. So, other than that, like, you, you answered program, you answered tools, you answered uh, Tumblr, you also answered your uh, DeviantArt. Is there oh, anything we haven't touched upon? I have a question. Huh? I have a question. Cool. Yes. Uh, regarding Sunshine and Moonbeams. Uh, okay. Moonbeams. Okay. So, so far, the way that the Tumblr is organized is basically slice of life update. Like, mm-hmm. you can pick any update that you have available, and there is no storyline, there is no backstory to pick up from. You can just pick any random update, enjoy it, and just keep on moving. So, yeah. which, which is great, it's, it's what many Ask Tumblers do, so it's easier for newcomers to get into it, see what's going on, get what's, uh, what's the gist of the Tumblr and all that. Are you going to continue like that, or are you going to throw a storyline in the end? I am probably going to continue like that. Because uh, I'm like a kind of go-with-the-flow kind of guy. I don't like to think too hard about things, usually. So so let me let me, let, let me run you through on how I, how I do an update, okay? Basically, I'm scrolling through my, my inbox, and I'm like, oh, that one could be very funny, and then I just draw that. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Yeah, seriously, the the idea. I just think about the idea. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, and I just draw it out. Didn't you have one question where you showed me was, uh, I'm kind of sugar coating the question. Is get rid of uh, Luna? Oh no, yeah. <laughs> so, I had a few questions trying to kill off Luna. What the heck? <laughs> really? <laughs> I know. <laughs> So what do you do with questions like that? Do you ignore it or do you try to acknowledge it or the idea hasn't come up yet? I I do not uh, acknowledge it. I just kind of ignore it. Mm-hmm. But I still keep it because you'll mm-hmm. never know. <laughs> ah. You never really know. when you might Update 37 it. of of uh, <laughs> Sunshine and Moonbeams. All of a sudden, Luna uh, assassination attempt. And they have to <laughs> sniper. Spoilers! Spoilers! <laughs> I can see meantime, it, really. In the meantime, somebody sneaks in the Canterlot archives and steals a spell to create a massive bell firebomb. <laughs> They're <laughs> dead. Su- suddenly, Sunshine and Moonbeams becomes Equestria 24... No, 24 Equestria edition. <laughs> oh my god, that sounds awesome. Okay, uh, so <laughs> wow. Applejack Whew. Bauer gets in the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. Oh God! Tell me where the bombs are, y'all. Sorry. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Whew. So wow. Mm. So. You did attend uh, the Us Tumblr panel at Buck, right? Of course, James Senpai was doing it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Sorry. shut up. I couldn't miss James Senpai. Auntie, the the Senpai has already been too much James here. It's like they're making the interview to me. I answer half <laughs> of your questions. <laughs> but no. Um... My <laughs> oh. That's not a word. I'm not your Senpai. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm not going to notice you. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. So anyhow, um, you did attend. So you did you learn or pick up anything from the panel? I find that offensive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That's not a word. <laughs> uh, I, I'm guessing we'll have to explain it later on in the Buck Retrospect. But yeah. seriously, uh, did you pick up anything from what they taught you, from what they talk about? Because for me, I did pick up a lot of things, but unfortunately for me, I am not an us Tumblr guy, so I probably won't use it. I, I did, I did pick up on a couple of things actually. Your your uh, your ways of dealing with like hate messages was really uh, uh, really interesting for me. Uh, basically, just what ignore them. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like this is how you deal with hate mail. You don't. <laughs> you just get rid of it. Mm -hmm. like, delete, block the person, block the person, delete the message, forget about it, just move on. It's easier for you and your health. Do not answer to the hate. Do not answer to that kind of uh, uh, attitude. Because if you answer to it with any ki any kind of response, will just create more hate. It doesn't matter if you are being respectful or anything. You will just piss off the person even further. Because this is the internet. Anonymity makes everybody. A That's not a word. So you have mm -hmm. to be careful with that. All right. All right. So. Oh yeah, that was that was one question in particular that was really really good. Which one? James, why are you so horse famous? <laughs> ah, piss off. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised you don't bring up the one advice that I gave that apparently a few people in the in the audience and and a few others in the in the panel itself they said it was a good idea. Uh what to do when your inbox is nuked. Oh. Mm. Yeah, yes. imagine for example like imagine that you are like me. You have like Two twelve hundred seventy something messages uh, stored in your ass box, okay? And you have a massive backlog of messages, and you're like, "Oh my god, what am I going to do with all of these?" So what you have to do is you load the entire inbox, you load all of the messages on it, and then you go and save page as, and then you save the page with all the messages in your computer, thus making a backup of all the messages that you were sent. In case you ever nuke the inbox. Sooner or later it's going to happen. You know it. It hasn't happened to me yet, but that's because I'm careful. Hmm. Okay. That's a good tip. That's a good tip. Mm -hmm. So, other than that, uh, anybody got any more questions related to... How did you start off as an artist? In general. In, in general? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well... Like like most people, I've been drawing since I was like really 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 young. I've like <laughs> scribbles from when I was two years old. Um, but like I only started getting serious like around what 2009. No ponies yet though. Uh, I was drawing like you know typical guy things, tanks and planes and stuff like that. Stick men, you know, lots and lots of stick men. Uh, and th and then this whole pony thing came about, and I just sat there doing nothing. Really. <laughs> It's weird. Uh, the first few years, uh, when I when I found the found out the show found the show, I just sat there watching because you know I don't know. I guess I was kind of intimidated or something like that. I kind of regret doing that. Uh -huh. I that earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a tough guy. What are these ponies? I'm not intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, my big break for the, this pony art thing started uh, last year, actually, uh, mm -hmm. around this time. Uh, during the uh, Equestria Daily Artist Training Grounds. That stuff helps, man. Really, no. Mm. So yeah, you would recommend people participating in the training grounds? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. You, you don't even know how many famous artists right now got started because of that. Oh, so mind walking us through what is it like to be in there or what goes on behind the scenes? For one thing, it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> but <laughs> the way the artist training ground works is uh, you're basically assigned a topic every day mm -hmm. and you have to draw that topic uh, for a month, every yes. day for a month. Yeah, you, you <sighs> basically have, you have to produce 30 pictures in 30 days. Ooh. You have to go a picture a day and the topic is different every day. And it does, the best part is that they don't give you... Uh, uh, level of quality that the picture has to have. Mm -hmm. It can be from a quick doodle made on a napkin to a 20,000 by 20,000 uh, Photoshop canvas crammed with every single little detail that you can imagine. It can be either of those, and they will still upload it. But if you have any um, self-respect, you are always going to work hard to make the picture look as good as possible. So, like, there is pressure, but the pressure doesn't come from them. It comes from you trying to get on their level. Mm. Yes. All right, all right. Sounds so, reasonable. So stressful and whatnot. So <laughs> it is stressful, but it's also, it uh, like, a good, it's a good challenge. Oh, yeah, really. it's stressful, but it's very rewarding. It is very rewarding. I used I use the artist training grounds to find my style. Actually, you can see uh, in my gallery. I posted all the pictures up. Uh, 
like from day one until until like halfway through, which I <laughs> I stopped halfway through. Yeah, I'm ser- I'm terrible. <laughs> Oh, that is, yeah. oh, sorry. F- finish. No, 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 go on, go on. Is that uh, the, the artist training grounds? If you you if you do them once, uh, that is, and if you like them, that is something that you can actually do on your own. Um, if you have like a randomizer and a list of topics and characters, you can perfectly do your own artist training grounds. I did that during August of 2012, where I had a randomizer of characters and a randomizer of topics. So every single day I would be drawing a, a black and white picture in like an, uh, with a time limit of one hour to two hours. And half of those pictures appeared on the draw frame in Equestria Daily. So it is a very good technique for you to brush off your, uh, your artistic skills and get better. Yes, definitely. Yeah, You don't need to depend on Equestria Daily for doing the training grounds. If you have some, some initiative, you can do it on your own. Hmm, all right. Mm-hmm. So basically... Just draw something and practice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just keep drawing. Just keep drawing. Awesome. Never awesome. stop what? drawing. Never stop drawing. Awesome. Awesome. Never so... gonna stop drawing. <laughs> Never <laughs> gonna draw you up. Never <laughs> gonna draw you down. Never gonna. No. So anywho, uh, I guess those are the questions, right? Oh. <laughs> James, any more? <laughs> I was gonna sing. No, I, I thought you t- said to stop you whenever you try to sing, right? Thank you. Uh, I have no other question to to do to Mr. Anticular. Oh my god, Senpai, you have so many followers. <laughs> no, 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 you're the Senpai. No, no, you're the Senpai. You are now the master. Uh, when, I left you, when I left you, I was the master and you were the pupil. Now you are the master. <laughs> I have surpassed my Senpai. Ah. <laughs> oh no. Uh, so, anywho... <laughs> Thank you, Henty, for coming on and wow, sharing your no story problem. with us. <laughs> so, where can they find you, man? Where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on my DeviantArt, uh, antiquilapony.deviantart.com. And my Tumblr blog is asksunshineandmoonbeams.tumblr.com. Okay, yes. you also have a personal Tumblr, right? That's called antiquilapony? Yeah, antiquilapony.tumblr.com, but I don't really post that much on there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because of something else is talking over your life. Yes, yeah, something else. This is this Tumblr princess thing is taking over my life. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, thank you, man. I'll yeah. add that into the show notes. So yes. let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. Ooh. Rome. Oh, so soon? Okay. All right, I am Romuald, and this is news time on the MBS show. In today's news, GM Barrow's panel at Buck 2014. One of the few guests that was at Buck 2014 was GM Barrow. She's the writer for the MLP novels and is a new writer for Season 5. At her panel, she did a presentation on writing for the MLP novels. Some of the things that she talked about was idea, concept, draft, editing, and after publishing. After her presentation was done, she did a quick question and answer with the audience. Links can be found in the show notes below. Yeah, yeah. funny enough, I did attend that panel, and it was pretty interesting to listen to her talk about her works. I need to listen to that one. I need to watch that because I wasn't at that panel. Same. Yeah, you you were at the your table, if I understand right. Oh, I, I was at the vendor tables, uh, yeah. drawing pictures and getting monies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. And D, what what did you do when you were there? I have. Oh wait, during the during the GM Barrow panel. Yeah, this was on Saturday. Uh, Saturday, Saturday. Where were you on the night when this happened? Uh, <laughs> I don't need to integrate with you, man. Uh, 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 12 30. 12 30, let's take a look, see. I, I am literally just going to the program right now. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I lost my pro. I lost my program. What? Shit. Oh man! Yeah, I lost it. I lost it. Oh, I no. don't know where the book is. Oh, Wait, that what? sucks. I know. Ah, uh, Ram. Whenever you attend, or well, in this case, when you attend Buck, they will give you this program or book booklet uh-huh. about the whole thing. What time is it? What's going on and whatnot. And all of us have one. And if I remember right, you need to pay for a program. Is it true if, or not? If you if you lose it, you have to pay for it. They'll give you to you free, but if you lose it. You have to pay for it for another one. Yeah. Yeah, so I couldn't get another one. Shucks. On Saturday, I was at the community music panel, actually, while the GM Barrow one was going on. Oh, okay. Well, I was at the GM Barrow panel listening to, well, listening to GM Barrow talk about how she does her work. And she's pretty interesting. And the way she talks about her work is like, 
yeah, I do it because it's fun and whatnot. And she writes stuff about ponies. It's really interesting. Mm. And she did use um, marshmallow drama in one panel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. She did. Best tag. Did. Best tag. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but still, um, it was a really interesting panel. I hope um, Buck recorded it and will upload it online because it was really fun and good. I really hope they do. Ooh, I, I need to watch it. Yeah. And Ron, next one, please. Roger that. And another news. Dave Polsky panel at BuckCon 2014. Dave Polsky, oh God, probably one, one of the more oh. <clears throat> probably one of the more famous guests at the convention, held a panel entitled Fun Fun and Rebellion in MLP. Polsky shares his point of view. Here he talks about how the fandom can be split into two parts. The parts that appreciate the show for the what it is, and the part that enjoys the show for what it can become. How goes on to talk about other writers that influenced his style of writing? At for his presentation, he did a quick Q and A session with the audience. Links can be found in the show notes below. Yeah, we were, I, we were all that panel. Do you want me to talk about this one? Yeah, please do. We know you're this the big one, fan of Dave Polsky. This one was um, this one was an experience. Like, do you know roller coasters and everything? This one was yeah. a roller coaster that had no brakes. Yeah. It was oh my just God. yeah, it was that kind of like dread dreading. Like you dread what's going to happen. You're kind oh, of geez. afraid that it's going to crash. Yep. Before we go into that, like, I have to say this. Like, you know how panels are, right? You sit down, you listen to people talk. Dave Polsky is different. He actually asked the audience to get up and shift to places like left or right because he wants to gauge like if you're a fan yeah, who yeah. appreciates the show for the, what it is. The panel, or... the panel wasn't boring, which is what's important is that there are many panels that can get very boring until they they go, they get to the interactive part, which is the mm -hmm. Q&A. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they, uh, Dave Polsky kept it very interesting because it was half a, half a lecture, half interactive, and then uh, just an uh, overall great experience, to be honest with you, despite the awkwardness that I'm going to talk about in a, in a few moments. Uh, yes. <laughs> but mm -hmm. it, was a, it, was a, it was a great panel, pro probably the, one of the yeah. best of the con. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. so, but but sorry. something happened. Yes. Something happened at the panel. Something did so, happen. Uh, yeah. As soon as Dave Polsky opened for Q&A, something that, uh, according to the convention, at the beginning when we were planning panels, because I was part of one, mm -hmm. uh, they said no Q&A. Then all of a sudden, so many so many panels started to do Q&A that they kind of like forgot the rule, and Dave Polsky just jumped in and said, okay, let's do some Q&A. And the con organizers, uh, they were not prepared for that. So oh, the God. first handful of questions that they were taking, they were not getting screened. Oh my. Now, guys, for those of you who don't know what screening a question is, it basically means that they ask you what you're going to ask the panelist before you ask it to make sure that it's appropriate, that it's okay, and that it's not something that might steer drama, controversy, awkwardness, or just, just not, you know, socially acceptable. So, like... Making sure that, for example, if it was in our pa Tumblr panel, make sure that people don't ask questions about Princess Molestia. Okay? <laughs> Just as an example. And also, I think that um, one of the con chair asked one of the questions. I was getting there. I was getting there. I was getting there. I was getting there. So there is one. Uh, the, the line forms. And five questions, no problem. But then the next question is made by none other but Mavro, the head of the convention, the chair, the, the, the head honcho, the big guy, the mm -hmm. organizer of the whole thing. And he uh, questions Dave Polsky about their in don't and what was the thought process behind it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he worded his question very well, but it was tackling some very controversial issues, like why is that Indu real? Why is why are the main six just letting that Indu do all the job, all the work? Why are we subtle think he can control the sun when Celestia does that? Why is Celestia doing this? Like, and but that was fine because it was funny because the audience was just face palming and Dave Polsky was very straightforward answering every single question at the that he was getting that he was given. So it was fine. And mm -hmm. at the beginning, at the beginning, I thought it was awkward. Then I was getting slightly annoyed, and then I kind of realized that wait a minute, this has to be scripted. It's flowing way too well. <laughs> and I don't know if it was scripted or not. 
it there was, was a little was. there was a little joke at the end of the panel that might have hint that it was scripted. But it doesn't matter because in the end it was one of the most memorable moments. Just yeah. uh, Dave Polsky defending his <laughs> episode with like a- every single weapon that he had at his disposal. However, people took this as uh, an open door to ask questions and get vindictive towards episodes that might have messed with their head cannon. Oh, so God. another guy comes to the yes. microphone. Oh, and you can imagine, one. you can already, I'm, all, I'm going to describe this guy for you, but you can already imagine this kind of guy. Like, yes. uh, awkward looking, rubbing his hands together, looking at the microphone, spasming every single, f- every five words he's saying, speaking very loudly, and using fandom terminology. Oh my. You can oh, already picture the guy on your, ma- on your mind, because that kind of person exists way too often. And I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw a punch here. They usually populate some of the most popular uh, brony analyst videos. Oh god! Yeah. So you can imagine, neat picky, uh, neat picky. That's not a word. We're gonna call this guy. Oh my so he <laughs> goes, he goes to the microphone, and immediately, immediately, he asks, "What's wrong with Twilight Time? Like, why did Twilight Time suck so bad? That was such a bad episode. Like." You know, why would uh, Twilight Sparkle teach the CMCs anything? She's a terrible teacher. Or why would Scootaloo learn how to put together a scooter? She's good at sports. Or why would Sweetable learn magic? Her talent is singing, not magic. Or why is Apple Bloom learning how to grow apples? She's good at fixing stuff, not growing apples. And all this time, just shaking his hands like he is... Uh, giving a sermon in, uh, in front of thousands of people. Just like spaghetti <clears throat> all over the floor. Yeah. And I was looking at that. Yeah. I was, yeah, and I was looking at that and I was, I was like, oh my god, I feel, I think yeah. that the entire audience was feeling awkward for this guy. Because he obviously. the whole didn't... room. Just yeah. Free. Yeah. You could, you could feel the entire, you could hear the collective clap as everybody just face palm. At the stupidity <laughs> yeah. that this. Word? Is showing in front of like literally thousands of people because the panel was packed. It was full of guys, and and this idiot is asking these things. And then, then the awesome thing happened. That oh my God! Dave Polsky is there with a straight face, listening to this guy basically tear apart an episode that I'm pretty sure he worked really hard on, because Dave Polsky works really hard on everything that he he he's done. Uh, he was part of the question the. That I made him, and he gave me that answer. So, this uh, this guy finishes ranting, because there is no better way to put it. He was ranting. He finishes his rant, and then Dave Polsky goes, You know, I could answer your question, but I think I am not going to, because I have something against uh, negative, nitpicky, vindictive, badly worded questions. And yours was all of those things. <laughs> I don't see the need to defend my own work. I let my own work speak for itself. And I don't think that I have to sit he- stay here and amuse you just so I can give you a reason that confirms your headcanon. He said something along those lines. I'm not yeah. exactly quoting him, but he said something along those lines. So he basically said, so yeah, I'm not going to answer your question, because not only you didn't word it properly, but because you were not very nice at doing it. Yeah, and everybody clapped. Yeah, yeah. Yes, followed like suit this. by people people clapping. And right after that guy, the con organizers decided to start screening all the questions. Yeah. yeah. Because that's something that you should do from the very beginning. That's not something that you do after somebody comes and drops an, a bowl of spaghetti in front of the in front of the guest. That's or everyone. Basically the, the, no, it's like he is the biggest guest of the entire convention. Oh, cool, like cool. he is one of the reasons why people are coming to the con because they want to talk with Dave Polsky, and you let this idiot ru- almost ruin it. Like the way that guy was acting. If I had been Dave Polsky, I would have walked out of the stage. <laughs> yeah. Like the, it was. It was bad. It was really bad. If and and Polsky acted like a like a, a absolute pro. Staying there, hanging there, and like, because I was looking at the guy, I was looking at Polsky more than at the guy asking the question, and I was like, this guy so wants to walk out of the stage right now. This guy wants to leave. I don't know what, what massive godlike force is keeping him up there, 
But if it was in his power, he'd totally walk out on us because he had enough of this. That's not a word! Yeah, I think the reason why he didn't because there were other people wanting to ask questions and those people had more better legit questions than uh, that one kid. So, I mean, for him to walk away without answering other questions would be not fair. I was very happy that he decided to stay. And I was very happy to see that my favorite writer had such a good attitude. True that, true that. Like I said, anyone else would have walked. After that, if I'm not mistaken, I got... Have you answer you got your questions uh, sorry you oh. answer a question right uh oh well I, I I did ask a question do I want to talk about that I've been talking about uh, about this for a while do you want right. me to keep on going yeah, you do. Know what? Um, okay in the okay it's just I I had been rehearsing this ooh. I'm not joking I had been rehearsing this question in front of the mirror uh, during my streams and all that telling it to myself picturing the moment uh, picturing the moment in my mind. And uh, I so wasn't ready to ask him this. And I was kind of like preparing a backup question in case somebody asked it. Nobody asked it, so I managed to ask it. So I go to the microphone, and I was kind of shaky. I didn't want to look awkward. I didn't want to look, you know, uncomfortable. And they had like a Jumbotron uh, screen on the stage. So whenever somebody asks a question, they make a close-up of the person asking the question. So all of a sudden, I go to the microphone, and there I am on the Jumbotron screen. Mm-hmm. Oh. And I'm like, yeah. okay. That's not a word. I have thousands of people looking at me right now. Do not. That's not a word. Stop. <laughs> James, you want me to play the song now? Because I have it here. What song? Give me a second. Oh. I have the tiger. Uh, so, in season four, you wrote uh, The Return of the Indu. An episode with Ray Dini since the last one was released two years ago. The Return of Princess Luna, one focused on Princess Light and the conclusion of the Equestria Games. Uh, these were very heavy episodes that the fandom wanted, was looking forward to. Did you ever feel any pressure coming from the fandom or like anyone in general uh, when you were writing them? Any pressure? What was the last part? Any pressure? Uh, any pressure from the fandom or from anyone in particular because these episodes were a very big deal uh, before they were released. Well, I, I certainly felt the responsibility, you know, that to do them well. And, um, uh, but, you know, I kind of, I don't know why, but as a writer, I kind of like, I kind of like challenges. I mean, I, I sort of attract, the sort of the more challenging the idea is, the more attractive it is to me. The higher the stakes with the fandom, the more attractive it is to me. And uh, then I take my lumps, you know, uh, for how it goes. Um, but that gets my, gets my creative juices going. I kind of, I kind of embrace it. That's great. As a Lendu, I thought you'd, your work in Super was excellent. Oh, thank you very much. You had to do it, didn't you? God, <laughs> there you have it, folks. Again, that was <laughs> awesome, man. I was very happy that people yep. applauded that last part because I thought somebody was going to boo or something. Because, you know, uh, that in Don't and Twilight Time are kind of like regarded as bad episodes. And I might be one of the few people in the planet who legit likes both of them. Hey, I do like Twilight Time. But I like them too. I, I, like, I was happy that people, but that people approved of the question and... I am so glad that Dave Polsky said that he likes challenges because it does look like it does look like every single episode this man wrote for season four was different in it in their own regard. That, uh, for example, Ted Valentine he likes episodes with trios in it, like with uh, uh, the three is a crowd, Cadence, Twilight, and Discord, mm-hmm. and with Flight to the Finish with Scootaloo, Apple Bloom, and uh, Sweetable. Mm-hmm. Then you have. Uh, you have Josh Haber, who is kind of like a fringe mm-hmm. author who likes to take the characters out of the comfort zone with, like, Applejack uh, breaking her element of honesty with uh, Rarity turning her into a hick <laughs> or the main six going into a castle at night. Mm. Uh, let's see. Let's scare the crap out of them. Yeah. But Dave Polsky, they, there was not a single thing that their, uh, his episodes had in common. One episode is Darren in due becoming a real character. The one episode is Rarity taking uh, uh, taking Manhattan and being the best fashion designer and finding the the purpose of her element. The other one is Twilight becoming a teacher for the CMCs. Another one is Luna giving advice to Suitable. And then the other is the conclusion of the Equestria Games. The only thing they have in common is Dave Polsky's style, not the themes. Mm-hmm. And hearing him say that, well, actually hearing him talk about what he wanted 
or what he had in mind with them was a challenge trying to do, hey, what if this happened? Wouldn't it be cool if this happened? And looking at that now, it does make sense. And I appreciate the episode even more. Yeah, it's like when you look at it, you you think, oh, this episode is so weird, it's so bizarre, it has nothing to do with anything. Why is that in the real? Why is Twilight teaching this the the CMC's new tricks? Why is why is Luna able to like transport suitable through through different kind of like mindscapes or whatever? And then you are told that they've posed like challenges, and you are like, ah. He's doing things different from other people. He's not doing what others others expect. He is doing what he thinks is cool, uh, new, cool, fun, entertaining. And in that regard, I think he succeeded. Mm-hmm. I mean, you hate or the, uh, hate that in don't all you want, but you cannot deny that that's one of the most entertaining episodes of the entire season. Oh, true, true, true. I do agree. I mean, yeah, yeah. And besides that, I mean, the way he talks about. The, no, sorry, the way he talks about his work, how proud of, how proud he is of with his work. Is, yeah. Even though with Twilight Time, he said it's not his favorite, but you can tell that he worked hard on it and he was happy with it. Like Hasbro didn't turn it down. Has, I'm guessing Hasbro didn't ask for a rewrite. I'm hoping so. I hope I'm right. Yeah, that's yeah. You know what? I will actually kind of agree with Dave Polsky and say that Twilight Time is the weakest episode of uh, season four that he has written. Mm-hmm. But even with that, like I, th- I think when we did the, re- the review of it, we gave that episode an eight out of ten. Uh, me, I'm thinking I give it a nine or eight. Yeah, and like I w- like I said, uh, sorry, you said. Yeah, and it's like for me, it's an eight out of ten, solid, because the one episode that is the one element that is supposed to work, that's uh, the character of Toilet Sparkle, mm. that works really well. Yeah, I mean, so that is such a good, strong, well written and well put together element true, true. that it, it it's it's kind of like yeah, you guys that. That's actually good. I mean, come on. You, you are disregarding everything else. Oh, come on. You have the Twilight wiping his mouth with a burger scene. That's priceless. That's just <laughs> awesome. I really yes. need to rewatch. I really need to rewatch that panel though, because my favorite question got answered, and I really want to hear the the reply. Because I wasn't thinking. I wasn't paying attention to the reply. I was rehearsing my own uh, question all right. in my in my mind. Is that the? It was asked by the guy who was right before oh. me. He he asked uh, about uh, Dave Polsky's uh, uh, what was it? Expontaneous uh, ex- expontaneity when it comes to writing. Mm. That the nature of his scripts is that they that they don't feel scripted. They feel very natural because the characters sound like real people. And that they flow very naturally. Like it's like one event goes to the next and goes to the next, and it's like you don't feel like you're getting dragged by the hand. You're just looking at characters being characters hmm. you you don't feel the you don't feel the you don't feel the hand of the writer taking you through the episode hmm. it's like you are traveling through the episode on your own accord true that sounds awesome and i want to know the i want to hear the answer to that because i don't remember what he said about it i do hope that buck posts post most of the questions up because it was really fun it was yes, a great was, panel. yeah it was, a, it was, in my opinion, the best, most informative, most entertaining panel. True. true. Let's not forget also that he dropped an F bomb oh, at the yeah. end. So. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and the whole, the whole crowd was like, woo. <laughs> he, it is. He said he was sorry. Yeah, it is. It is funny though because when you come, when it comes to like revolutionary or like. Uh, French uh, authors mm-hmm. in in the show. You think Emma Larson? <laughs> yeah. You think Ooh. Josh Haver? But no, they, they, Dave Polsky might be the rebel. Oh, to- talking of... about um, Emma Larson, I think uh, Dave Polsky uh, did a dig on <laughs> did a dig on Emma Larson. I think the question was if you could rewrite an episode of the show, what do you do? I think he said something about season three. And... Something about Rich Larson. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that was fun. I really, yeah, Buck, you need to post this episode or post that show yes. or panel. I'm pretty sure that post I'm pretty sure they are. Oh God! Now that I think about it, there there is an F bomb in there. I'm pretty sure they're going to release it oh, now, they're, they're or they're, really, they're gonna have yeah, to censor they're it. They're gonna censor it. They're gonna censor they're it. They're gonna have to censor it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But still, but still, um, it was a great panel, and if Buck is gonna have something awesome like this next year, I might be 
going. I, I hope I can go. I hope I can go. I really hope Buck happens next year. You better year. be going, man, because I'm going next year. I'm selling money as of now for the next convention. Hey. I'm going next year, too, and I am going to do a vendor table along with Mecha. Indeed, indeed. I will hey. be vending, too. Indeed. Next Mecha year. and I... Mech and I, we're going to be sharing a table. We're going to pay half of it, uh, a half each. And we're going to share the time. Any time that I am not at the table, he will be. And any time that he is not going to be at the table, I will. So I can go to those panels. <laughs> so, but, but anywho, uh, we, we're, we're digressing. We're digressing. So let's right. move on to the next news. The last news, in fact. Next. And another news. UK MLP Magazine features free rarity figure. If you are in the UK, you'll be happy to know that you can get a free rarity figure with each purchase of My Little Pony magazine. Also, with you'll get a free MLP stickers. There's a bunch. Show notes below. Where do nah, I it's get rarity. that? I don't want it. It's rarity. Oh, uh, United it. Kingdom. You, you. I can't even find the words. I, I, I am what? in the UK right now. I could, I could get it for you, James. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> because you know what, I was there, yeah. uh, and the the, the 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 magazine wasn't available. Yeah, I did. Yeah, we were there. Oh God. Yeah, I was there, and the magazine wasn't available. It wasn't anywhere. Oh my God, that's such a good figure. God damn it. Is it a vinyl figure? What, what, what uh, kind of figure we're talking actually, about? Actually, you here? know what, it's solid plastic, and the stickers look neat too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. God, there, there is even some Discord. Oh God, there is a Diamond Tiara sticker in there. <laughs> Oh my! Uh, you, wow, oh my gosh! Please, dude, get me, get me that, get me that, please, please. You want it? I want that. Okay. Yes. Get me I love you a long time. <laughs> I'll throw in the magazine as well. <laughs> they Tiara. I don't see her. Yeah, it's right next to Discord on the oh, left yeah. side of the stickers. Ooh, also next to Poop Squeak. Hey, girls. Awesome. If you if you think about it, uh, just uh, I'm going to such way the. Uh, podcast completely, mm-hmm. but I need Why to bring this up. Stuff? Is that the one and only remaining true villain <laughs> in the entire show right now is Diamond Tiara? <laughs> because even Discord got redeemed and turned into a good guy. Diamond Tiara has never been and will never be a good guy. She <laughs> is more evil than the god of chaos. Oh god! <laughs> like <laughs> that <laughs> little that little filly packs the the wrath of. Thousand titans. It's amazing how she is never going to be redeemed. Oh God! <laughs> she has never the say bad. Never, James. Never no, say no. Never. She has... You never she... know. Oh, she! Come on, she's like two steps away from turning into the emperor. <laughs> the only reason why she is not turning into the emperor is because she's not voiced by Ian McDiarmid. <laughs> Oh boy! Hey, but anywho, I'm power. <laughs> and then she starts summoning tiaras. <laughs> That's my power. <laughs> tiaras for everybody. <laughs> Except for the CMCs. <laughs> you don't get tiaras. <laughs> That's my plan. <laughs> wow. But anywho, um, <sighs> this is cool. I mean, Andy said he will get you one, so I'm just jelly. <laughs> yeah, well, Andy, Andy, please. Well, if you yes, want to yes, give it to yes. me, I don't mind. Okay. I will give you my home address right now, Auntie, so you can get me one. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> but but anywho, um, nothing much to say except it's out there. If you're in the UK, go get it because I'm guessing it's a lot of fun. And if you love rarity, go ahead. Oh, talking about rarity, did you saw my post on Tumblr, James, about rarity? Yeah, I know. I didn't. Oh, we said. But anywho, um, that's the news for today. Rom, take us out. Hi, I'm Romeo, of the MBS Show News. Back to you, Norman. Thank you. And, well, since the format has changed a bit, um, next topic is shoutouts. And my shoutout goes mm-hmm. to you, Andy. Thank you for coming on the show. No problem, really. <laughs> I hope you have fun, man. I hope you have fun. Oh, but I am. I am having so much fun. Awesome, awesome. And yeah. to you, James and Rom, thank you for coming on and breaking me up. Yeah, why, are you, even give, why are you even giving me a shoutout? You should fire me. <laughs> why? <laughs> Because I never <laughs> shut up. I just keep talking. Well, it makes my job easier. <laughs> well, that's the point of the podcast, man. People talk. Yes. You're doing yes. your job perfectly, unlike me. <laughs> but, no, but Romy, that's the thing. We cannot let you talk too much. There's people... If you see, it's like the NBA show featuring you're in Rome. Uh, warning, you shouldn't handle heavy machinery when doing watching this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> side effects. In, uh, side effects. Heavy sleeping... <laughs> Nodding off, closing of the eyelids, uh, uh, drowsiness, and growing potatoes on your head. That happens when you're around. <laughs> but hey, how, much potatoes. Potato- 
I have a giant potato hanging inside in front of my nose, and one coming out of my ear. What the hell happened, man? Why did you do this? What did you do to you? Side. You can make French fries for dinner now. Uh, I don't want to. Wa- I am not going to eat French fa- fries. I hate the French. <laughs> okay, oh, mashed potatoes. Oh god. Anywho, moving on. <laughs> James, you shout outs. I want to give a shout out to Norman because he lets me stay here even though he should have fired me ages ago. Uh, uh, now I want to give a shout out to Romu because he's able to take all the peace that I gave to him and not only he, he dances around it and then he shoves it on his face. He's such a funny guy. And I, I give a shout out to Auntie because he has turned into a senpai for me because no. I don't know how he does it because it's amazing. 3,000 followers in a month yeah. and, a few, and a few days. Mm-hmm. That is unheard of. Yeah. I think I haven't seen someone getting so popular since, I don't know. In the sequel? Yeah, something like that. Uh, it's pretty, pretty unbelievable. And it's really cool that you managed to step into the Tumblr scene with such a, with, in such a good way. <laughs> and finally, last but not least, want to give a, a big shout out to uh, Fall Silently because he got me a uh, movie slate, real life movie slate with real film hair and everything. The pictures are in my blog. You can check them out later. Mm-hmm. But he got me a real life movie slate and she's standing now next to me. She's looking at my <laughs> laptop monitor oh, because that's where I watch movies. So I have her watching movies all day here with me. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I forgot to mention one more thing. Um, one big shout out and one awesome shout out to Ace Sleeves. He is mm. the man. He's always the man. Uh, because without him, my dream to go to Buck or attend Buck would have never been realized. Yeah, I would have, I would have, been, I would have been unable to go to Buck as well. So yeah, big shout out yeah, to Ace. Thank you, man. Thank you. Cool, cool guy. Yeah, thank you, dude. Thank you. thank you a lot from the bottom of my heart, really. I hope you listen to this. <laughs> I will thank you from the bottom of my heart, but I sold it ages ago for uh, the ability to shade properly. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I did a deal with a sea which... I don't know how well it went. Are you not Mephisto? What? No, I'm not into that kind of stuff. You're weird. <laughs> oh, Spider-Man reference going out the window. Anywho, Rom, what about you? Hi, Mom. That's all? <laughs> yes. All right, then. And wow. Enti, if I wasn't by my mother, I wouldn't be here. True, true. <laughs> but Enti, what about you? Oh, yes. Uh, big shout out to all these guys, all these wonderful guys in the MBS show. Oh. Norman, James, Rom, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for bringing me on here. Uh, another shout out to my little sister as well, because <laughs> without without whom my 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 Tumblr blog probably wouldn't work at all. Yeah, I have to thank her too because she's awesome. Yeah. Because of her, who is she? Luna. <laughs> she is Luna. <laughs> I am the Celestia. And she's. The... Yay! <laughs> hey Luna, did you even leave? <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> shut, shut up. <laughs> Anywho, uh, yeah, I'm the big brother. She's the sister, you know. <laughs> uh, so, and if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at abshow at gmail dot com. And if you'd like to email us personally, links are in the show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. Sudibot will talk about stuff related to Buck and post pictures of. But or reblog stuff that things we do probably or she just complain about James cursing <laughs> and you can also reach sorry sweetie but without me you wouldn't have a job remember that well, true that she needs to remember her place <laughs> anywho uh, you can also reach me at Norman Sanzo I tweet stuff about food toys whatever tickles my fancy and recently I've been tweeting pictures of me at Buck so yay and James where can they find you well, they can find me on James Lower Score uh, Cork on Twitter. They can check my uh, DeviantArt page on jamescork.deviantArt.com and they can check Movieslate's Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome. And Rom? You can find me at relicious.deviantArt.com or my Tumblr, iamrelicious.tumblr.com. Awesome. And also, please... I don't hang out on Twitter anymore, so there's no point in posting that anymore. Oh, really? No Twitters? No. Aww. Only Tumblr, man. Ah, okay. Twitter doesn't allow me to post a three-page rant like Facebook allows me to. <laughs> if Tumblr I find something love. that grinds my gears, I immediately post it on the internet to let the steam out. Uh, Twitter doesn't allow me to do it. Only a few short words. Okay, okay. No fun. 
<laughs> and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVLive.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been lost all the time. Where did I put my slippers? <laughs> nurse! <laughs> nurse! I need my pills! I am Romeoald. Hello, I am Anticular Pony. And we'll catch you guys next week with... I got no idea. Um, nurse! I need my lines! <laughs> Somebody <laughs> fetch me a bedpan! <laughs> oh, too late. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. I can't put those things together. Like a shutter and mutter my words Because my presence is a sin down I'm in a big jam You wanna follow me? Because when I was 13 I had a lucky streak And obviously the mother children Who have added me Hoping I can help them with life Or kids See I'm not a prodigy I'm just a normal guy And I drive to survive I won't die knowing That I wasn't helpful to kid Please listen Save your own way in life And don't start kissing up I know it sucks I hate being stuck Relying on luck But you're gonna be missing All the shots you don't take So you gotta stand strong And know what's at stake Keep holding tight And just look what's behind you Don't lose the Fight, just wait till we all find you. Don't stand alone, stick together like a flock. I'm standing right by you outside the airlock. Track that's hard to look back at. I'm just a whack brat looking for a blood pack fat. I'm making more music like a class act. Ever since I had that rap pack with Delegate Cat, that's a long time ago. But people still watch it even though it's so so. So, kid, do you really want to let the beat drop? Well, I'll be standing right here outside the airlock. Keep holding tight and just look what's behind you. Don't lose the fight, just wait till we all find you. You can scan your picture, but only if you draw very carefully on the lines. I never saw the point of that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah same. Give it a second. Give it a there second. goes the ambulance. Yep, the photo. <laughs> there goes the ambulance. <laughs> there goes the... I'm sorry. I live next to the hospital. Besides being a very popular Tumblr guy, for famous, yeah, yeah. would you draw my OC? <laughs> <laughs> draw my OC. <Ocean. laughs> Do, do, you want to, do you want me to link that picture? You want to link that picture? <laughs> put, put this picture in the show notes. Put this picture in the show notes. Yeah, I will. From my ocean. There you go. Have it. I've already drawn your OC. Oh, <laughs> Both of you. Andy. 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 Draw my OC. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what have I unleashed? That's oh, no. our running gag, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I know. Is it a black and red Alicorn OC with broken horn back wings? Oh, God. Uh, but any broken, who... broken horn, one wing, and his best friends <laughs> with Celestia, Luna, Princess Cadence, his dating Twilight Sparkle on Mondays, Pinkie Pie on Tuesdays, Rainbow Dash on Wednesdays, <laughs> Applejack on the weekends, Flutterfly on Fridays, and he doesn't date Rarity because she sucks. Um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and his parents are dead. <laughs> no, no. I, and, and, and his parents are dead, and uh, he also wants to have a relationship with the Kitty Mark Crusaders, but he's waiting. <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> but no offense to you guys who have OCs like this. <laughs> I ba- that that last bit I based it on someone who lives here, who's here. I, I'm not going to point anyone, Norman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no comment. But, <laughs> but any, <laughs> but on a serious matter, on a serious matter, Auntie. 